they make some cute cowgirls right there. Well, this is Labor Day weekend. Labor Day. So let's talk for a few minutes about Labor Day and Delivery Day. You don't want to just go through Labor Day without having some delivery. Now, Labor Day is observed the first Monday in September. It's an annual celebration in our nation of social and economic achievements for American workers. Have you ever been told that you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day and you're not supposed to wear it before Easter? Do you know why? You have no clue why, do you? Because we follow traditions of men. If you research it, it was to separate the upper class from the working class. The upper class folks did not wear white after Labor Day. My suggestion to you is be your own class. Dress classy all year long. If you want to wear your white breeches when it's 80 and 90 degrees, please feel free to do so. But I'm going to tell you, if you do wear white shoes, make sure they're nice, classy white shoes because it's hard to do good-looking white shoes. Just a fashion tip. So this is Labor Day weekend, so Pastor and I are going to talk to you just a few minutes about Labor Day and Delivery Day. Isaiah 65, 23 says, They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. Say, so that's me. I'm not going to labor in vain. None of my kids are going to be associated with misfortune. For they will be a blessed people by their Lord, they and their descendants with them. Everybody say, that's, that's part of who I am. We have been telling you guys around here for the better part of two years that we are in a birthing season. We've called it relaunch, rebirth, reset. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But spiritual birthing is a process and if you have not discerned, then you need to tune up your discernment. Metro Tab is in a new season. Labor Day happens before Delivery Day. Now we're going to keep this on the up and up level because all of our Metro kids are in here in the room with us. Or I could describe a whole lot of stuff to you right now that I'm not going to describe. I want to send some of your kids into shock where you have to have some kind of major lunch discussion. <laughs> Just enjoy your weekend. The church has been, the, the church with the big C, the big church, has been carrying visions and dreams and, and missions and purpose for a long time. And for a long time, for a season of many years, the church has been in a waiting room, waiting on fulfillment of scriptures. We've had many seasons in the church. But in this waiting room of development... When we should have been receiving growth and new revelation, many have grown weary and we miscarry our purpose. So therefore, over the last few years, the church has morphed into a social club rather than an army. We, the church at large, looks like pretty much the sloppiest army you will ever find. If we don't feel good, we don't show up. If we don't like the order, we just don't do it. Now, if, when you enlist in the army for real, you do that, you will be dishonorably discharged. Your butt will be kicked out without honor. But this is where we are. The church season has changed. We are in a moment where we must let go of some things that are no longer needed. What was useful in a past season may be completely irrelevant in this season. It was such a great moment when we decided to launch this church 20 years ago. In October, we'll celebrate and have a party. But I, we didn't come here as novices when we launched this church 
We came here with a history of successful ministry. And I, it was so frustrating to me. It, it feels like I'm in that rebirthing moment because we're about to rebirth Daughters of Destiny. Well, when we launched this church, I already had a Daughters of Destiny scheduled in Pigeon Forge. And we launched this church, which means you have no office, no personnel. None of the things that you've been used to having around you. And at that point, we had over 1,200 scheduled and registered for that conference. So we quickly leased a copier and put it in our house. Our house became the office. And I remember there was a Daughters of Destiny prep night, and I had about 26 people in my house, and I thought I was going to lose my mind. But the thing about it, when we launched this season, God did not let us lean on things that had worked in a past season. Even down to, I mean, we had manuals and, and books and stuff on nursery and, and Christian education classes and life groups and small groups. What do you want to call the groups? We had all that. And he just said, nope, you're going to rebirth the season. And I'm like, but this stuff is pretty good. Like, you know, you gave us this stuff. We didn't just dream this stuff up that we brought in here with us. He said, it's a new season. You need to listen to my voice. You need to see what I'm seeing. So we are in that moment right now in this house. The body of Christ is in that moment. And we stunt our growth when we hold on to things and relationships and traditions. Traditionalism will choke you out. There are some traditions that we never need to let go of. The tradition of holiness. The tradition of respect and honor. There are some traditions that need to be held near and dear to our hearts always. But traditionalism, just doing a thing because we've always done a thing, will choke you out. We're kind of like the girl who, she got married and she bought her a, a ham, a canned ham, and, and she took it to her house and she cut both ends of it off and, and put it in the oven. Her, and her young husband said, why are you cutting the ends of the ham off? And she said, I don't know, mom always did. They went back to mom and mom said, I don't know, Grandmother always did. They went back to grandmother. Her pan was too small. <laughs> and some of our traditions are just that crazy. Just because we've always done it that way. And you know you're among religious people when they get that look on their face and say, well, we ain't never done it that way. I say, well, baby, but now we is about to do it that way. So there are some natural stages of labor when you are birthing anything. If you're birthing a baby, you're adopting a child, you are birthing a business, you're birthing a new position on a job, you're birthing a new relationship, you will go through stages of labor before you get that thing birthed. So I want to go through, there are some stages that we go through in, that a woman will go through that, that sort of correlate in the spirit realm. The first one is false labor. You know, we, we get a word from God. Then a minor irritation start hitting us. And we think, oh, God, this is a battle. No, baby, that's not a battle. It's just a little irritation. And if you don't learn to handle minor irritations, you will never face the battle. And you will never win the battle. If little minor irritations take you out and give you migraines every day, you need to go back and realize you're in false labor. You haven't even hit labor yet. Then there's spiritual early labor. And, and what we take away from this is you can't focus on every pain in your life. And there are those who just push their pain. They just push their story. My story's worse than yours. My pain is worse than yours. You know what I'm going through. Not minimizing the fact that we do go through things. But when you decide to, to birth yourself as a warrior and to birth yourself into a new season, you cannot live stressed and exhausted. Amen. Now, in this, in this early stages of labor, the pain level is enough to get your attention. You're like, okay, God, uh, I, I need to tune in here. You're trying to say something to me. But the pain in the early stages of labor is not enough to stop you. 
I know when I was carrying our daughter, I left Chattanooga and went to Cleveland, Tennessee. I was told on Tuesday that she would be a week to 10 days late. So on Friday, my husband was scheduled to go to a car auction in Lenore City with one of our members. And mom had come into town for a conference and we were going to a concert at Lee University. So I took my happy little self up there. Now on the way there, I had pains three minutes apart. Like you can check them on the, the car clock. But because it didn't go like my mom's pains did, we were all convinced that that wasn't labor. So we went to Wendy's restaurant to grab a hamburger before the concert. And I remember one of Pastor's friends came over, and I remember trying to say hi to him. And, and it, it's like, I went, hi. And I was, I mean, whoo, the, the pains were like, it was intense enough to get your inten- attention. So I didn't feel good enough to go into the concert, but I'm pretty strong. I talked him out of going to the to, to bring me back home, and I talked Mom into going to the concert because I'm fine. On the way back to Chattanooga, a minute apart on the clock. But I didn't go. I went home. I went to bed because I wasn't about to go do all that mess right then. But as you would have it, in just a few moments, I was on the way to be delivered. <laughs> He called the doctor, and the doctor said, you need to get her here like in a minute. I was at the hospital an hour and 45 minutes, and we had a brand-new baby. So they were wondering where I had been. The nurse that was taking care of me, she said, where have you been? I said, oh, I've been in Cleveland. Is that not what everybody does? Yeah, sure. I was probably in a thing called active labor. When you know you're in active labor spiritually, travail hits your spirit. And things start happening and and pressure is building. When you are in active labor in in planting a business or planting a church or birthing a spiritual vision, this is when you need a coach the most. Somebody who's been through a thing that can walk you through this thing. Because when you are in active labor, things start happening fast, but not fast enough. There's always a waiting period. The most dangerous position that we get in is transition phase. That's when you're, if you're, if you're a woman in pregnancy and you're have, carrying a baby, you're hot, you're cold, you're happy, you're sad, you hate, you love, and it's all in 30 seconds. You know, I remember Pastor was such a very kind coach. And he took a washcloth and he took it to my bangs and he pushed my hair back and something manifested in me. (laughs) And I told him, not so nicely, do not touch my hair. I have people waiting to see me when I get through with this. He was like, you all have your stories. But when you hit the transition phase, the pressure is on, and there is a strong urge to push when you were trying to launch a business, launch a ministry, launch a new season, whatever the case may be. Most believers lose it when we hit the transition phase of labor because it's not happening fast enough. The word that God gave them is not developing enough. Their coach ain't saying what they want to hear. Their mentor has lost their mind. Their pastor's not for them. They must be against them. I feel a season change. I'm just not being fed. I'm just not getting anything out of those services anymore. Baby, you're in a transition phase. And most of us bolt and run because When you study the anointing, the anointing means spiritual fatness. So when you begin to call a new season into your life, then the yoke that's been around your neck, your neck becomes spiritually fatter. And that yoke gets tighter. 
So that, at that point, when we're getting to where we can't breathe, it's like, okay, we must have missed God. This is not the church for me anymore. This is not the job for me anymore. This is not the husband for me anymore. My kids are driving me crazy. No, you're just in a transition. You're just trying to break something off your life. And we bolt and run, and we mistake a release of pressure for peace. Because when you bolt to a new season, then the enemy just lets off on you for a little bit. But then in that other season that you bolt to, you're going to have to, you've just drug all your mess into that new season with you. Not, not one thing's been broken off of you. So don't bolt and run because there is an appointed time to push. And when the Spirit says to push, you don't just push your pain. You push for results. You know, the experts say if you launch a business and it survives five years, you're successful. I'm going to say to you, if you launch a marriage and it lasts five years, you're successful now. Because most folks spend less time looking for a marriage partner than they do shopping for a car. You know, you'll go shop for a car and you'll ask the guy, you know, what kind of tires, how, how's this, what's the engine? You don't even know how her engine works, whether she even got one or not. You don't know whether his tires are bald or not. You hadn't been with him long enough to see his anger. You haven't been with her long enough to see her crazy. Go to their family reunion and look at the line. Look at the lineage. Some of y'all need to bolt and run then. Because there's some stuff in every family. And when you get that thing together, they are all coming in your house. All those things come in your house. There's an appointed time to push. I truly believe that we have to push while we're in pain if we intend to produce. So I believe he's saying to us now, push. Turn to your neighbor and say, push. push. Look back and say, you don't have time to cry. Look back and say, you don't have time to be depressed. Look back at him and say, don't give up. Push. He's birthing a promise through you. Come on. Push a little bit more. Come on, push a little bit more. Some of y'all going, push. It gets to be a little more intense and it is the anointing that destroys the yoke and when you start that spiritual fatness if you don't back up and quit and bolt and run you'll get fatter spiritually and you'll break that yoke off that's been holding you back because when there is labor there is going to be delivery Unless you decide to abort. And too many people have aborted their destiny. Aborted, aborted their promise. Aborted their purpose. You ain't saying nothing now. You have aborted that which God deposited in you because you didn't know how it was going to work. And you didn't have it all figured out. Let me tell you, you may not get it all figured out. But he knows. Isaiah 66, 9 says, God speaking, he says, Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? Do you think God made a promise to you? Do you think God deposited in you and put something in you to bring to fulfillment, to bring to fruition, and he can't do it or he won't do it or it won't happen? No. No. When God puts something in your spirit, and I need to tell you, everything you need for your purpose has already been deposited in you. Everything you need to walk out your miracle, to walk out your life, to walk out your ministry, to walk out your business, whatever it is, God has already made the deposit. He has been nurturing you, and it is time for delivery. We are in a new season of delivery. We are in a new birth. It is now. The time is now for the church. 
church at large, the big C, and for Metro Tab. God has put us in a place of expansion. I'm prophesying to you right now. We are in a place of expansion. We are in a place of development. We are in a place of growth. We are in a new season for a new time. We have crossed the threshold from the dispensation of grace, and we are entering into the last days. Look at somebody and say, push! I like Jeremiah 30. I didn't even tell Pastor Rita to put this in the scripture, in the message. And she told me, she said, I put it in because it's one of your favorite verses. <laughs> See, men like to exclude themselves from the process when we start talking about birthing. And women like to think that they are the only ones that have ever birthed anything. I could say something here, but I won't because the kids are here. <clears throat> but Jeremiah 30 verse 6 says this. Now, let me ask you a question. Do men give birth to babies? Then why do they stand there, ashen-faced, hands pressed against their sides? Like a woman in labor. Like they are going through something. I know some men that have gone through a thing. And their face is ashen. And their eyes are bugged out. And they look like they just saw a train headed at them. And they're holding on for dear life. Push. Push. Push, because God has put something in us, and it's time to give birth. And even though there is such a thing as natural childbirth, part of the process is to push it out. You get to the point that it's moving, and it's kicking, and it's turning, and it's alive. And it cannot stay inside of you because it's too big. Oh, you didn't hear me. You think you're just going to let it keep growing? You're going to push on past the ninth month, which is the month of birthing. And you're going to go into the tenth month and say, no, I'm just going to hold it here. You think you're going to go into month twelve? So I'm going to set a record. I'm going to hold this thing in here for a year. Hold on, baby. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. When somebody is impregnated, when somebody is going to give birth, the closer it gets to the time, they know. When you start telling folks in your world, it's time. You don't have to explain what you're talking about. You don't have to give them a discourse. You don't have to give them a, a book or a manual and say, here, read this. It's time. And they go, what do you mean? Everybody knows what you mean when you say it's time. Just touch somebody and say, it's time. We've been in this for a while. It's time. Now, in the earth, the pressure may have eased just a little bit. Some of the mandates have been relaxed. You don't have to have the vaccine to go on your cruise now. You don't have to wear the mask when you fly on the airplane now. And so everything has relaxed. And we are mistaking around the world, people are mistaking a release of the pressure for peace. But we are in the transition and we are coming to the point of giving birth. And it's time to push. It's time to let people know it's time. You ain't say nothing. 
God is telling his remnant that we can get ahead of this thing. We can be ready. He's, he's saying it is time for the warriors to get suited up. It's time for us as warriors to put on the whole armor of God. It's time for us as warriors to get ready, get ready, get ready. Because it's time. It's coming. We are in the season. We cannot wait. We cannot tarry. We have to do what God has called us to do because we have entered the birthing season. It's time to break off the heavy chains of delay and distraction. There will be distractions. There will be things that will say to you, oh, it's not what you thought. Everything's peaceful now. I read in my Bible when they cry, peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come. We have entered a season. It is time to abandon the thought patterns that have imprisoned us in the past. Some folks have had certain mindsets that have kept us bound and kept us restricted and kept us in straitjackets and prevented us from breaking out and being free and being worshipers and being leaders and being barrier breakers and being giant killers and being water walkers and being mountain movers. Come on, it's time to change the way that we have been thinking. It's time for us to activate the prophetic words that have been given to us. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? In 1 Timothy 1.18, he said, war with the prophecies. Some of you in this room and some of you watching online, you've received prophetic words. You've had more prophetic words. You've got enough prophetic words to fill a museum. What are you doing with him? It's time that we go to war and say, Lord, let me, according to Isaiah 43, let me call you to remembrance and remind you of this word that you gave me about my babies, this word that you gave me about my ministry, this word that you gave me about my business, this word that you gave me about the church, this word that you gave me to use me to preach to the nations, this word about the last day revival. I remind you, according to Isaiah Isaiah 43, it shall come to pass. And it's not that God needs to be reminded. He said, remind yourself, remind me. It's so that we remember what God has said. He is the miracle worker. He's put the word in our spirit. Go to war with the prophecies. It's right here in 1 Timothy 1, 18. War with the prophecies. down it's time to activate them he said pastor how do we activate them i'm glad you ask it starts right here <laughs> it starts right here oh my god I call on you today in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your promise. I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you spoke. I thank you for that prophetic word that you gave me. I stand on it in the name of Jesus. I call on you. I declare and decree that word will come to pass. I'm ready. I receive it in Jesus' name. I break the assignments. I break the back of the enemy. I break the back of lack. I break the back of sickness. I break the back of death. I break that spirit off of my family off of the church off of my people off of my ministry off of my business in Jesus name I stand on your word in the name of Jesus oh hallelujah 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 it's time to go to war it's time to go to war we are warriors we are in a war. We are in a battle. We cannot quit. We cannot lay down. We cannot not show up. We're birthing, we're rebirthing daughters of destiny. Friday night. Oh, I think I'll just wait till Saturday morning. Oh, well, I'm going to sleep in on Saturday. I'll go Saturday afternoon. Well, maybe I'll just wait and go on Sunday morning and get the tail in. Uh-huh. Yes. 
We cannot be a wall in the service of God. We cannot be a wall at our post, in our position. He's looking for his remnant people. The ones that did not give up during tough times. The ones that pressed on through the depression and pressed on through the fear and pressed on through the misunderstanding and the confusion. He's looking for those that are praisers. He's looking for those that have made up their mind to be a part of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Somebody say push. Push. So how do we do it? Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, nor by power, but it all takes place by His Spirit. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual birthing. Yes, we're warriors. Yes, we're raising up warriors. We're training warriors. But the war is fought on our faces, on our knees. The war is fought holding our head up and our hands up as praisers, as worshipers. The war is fought by getting out in front of the worshipers and being singers and dancers and celebrating who he is. Not by might, nor by power, but by God's Spirit. Joel 2.32 says it like this. Whoever, whoever, look at your neighbor and say, I am a whoever. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Is it Labor Day weekend? Is it, is it, is it Labor Day weekend? And don't we have to have a day of labor before we have the day of delivery? Who shall, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and saved. And among the remnant of survivors, survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Can I just put some confirmation in your spirit right now can I just tell you something that you really should already know you are called you're called you have a calling on your life you have a calling whether you've realized it or not whether you want to accept it or not you have been called you're not here by accident you didn't just show up in this church you didn't show up today you didn't just show up a few months ago or a few years ago and think well I like the music and you know it's great preaching when Pastor Rita's up there and I like to go hear her preach and and I like to be a I just you didn't just show up the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord he ordered your steps he brought you here he set you up for such a time as this and you have been called you have been chosen you have been anointed you have been ordained he has put his finger on you and touched you for such a time as this and you are part of the remnant body of Christ around the world whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved among the remnant of survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls When delivery day arrives, you must cut the cord. There comes a moment that you cut the cord. As I research this, there's different philosophy among some doctors. But historically, the cord would be cut when a baby was delivered somewhere between the first and the third minute 
one to three minutes. Some doctors now are saying they'll wait up to five minutes and there are health benefits as the blood passes during through the cord during those five minutes. Other doctors are saying it should be done in the first 15 to 30 seconds. But they all say within the first five minutes, the cord should be cut. The cord connects us to that which we are coming out of. We are connected by that which we are birthed from. There is a connection. Because during a certain season of pregnancy, we receive everything through the cord. Maybe you can help untangle that mess. (laughs) But for nine months, everything that we needed for living came through the cord. We got everything. Our blood, our oxygen, our food, everything came through the cord. But when we come to Labor Day and the process starts, the pushing starts, the transition starts, the delivery starts, When the baby is delivered, the cord is going to be cut. You cannot stay connected when you are delivered. There are some folks that they want to be delivered, but they don't want to be separated from the cord. They want to stay connected so they can run back over and get some more of what they had. But when you are delivered... You have to cut the cord. You are no longer sustained by what sustains you. You are in a new season. Birthing is a new season. When birth takes place, the old season ends. And you have to cut the cord. You have to be separated from the past. You have to be separated from what sustains you for a season. And everything that sustained us is not necessarily bad, especially in a natural childbirth. Your mother sustained you. Everything that came through the court sustained you. But when you are delivered, there are things in our life, because we're talking about any kind and every kind of deliverance. When we are delivered, there are things in our past that maybe were part of who we were. As Dr. Shirley talked today about the old life and how she went to the friends, those things will try to pull you back. They want to keep you connected. But you have to say, no, 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 I've got to get free from this. I've got to get delivered from this. And in order to get delivered, if you stay connected to the court and you don't cut the court, you will remain in the past. You will remain connected to things that were not good for you, things that held you back. You've got to cut the cord. If I could get a pair of scissors. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time. It's time. When you cut the cord, you cut away the distractions. You cut away everything that would keep you bound to your past season. (laughs) There's only one way to get free from this. That's to cut the cord. Cut the cord. Throw the cord away. Step into your new season. Live the life that God has determined and planned for you to live. You cannot stay in the past. we got to cut the cord. We've got to break free. We've got to go to the new place, the new time, the new season. This is a season of expansion. This is a new season. This is a new time. God has set us up. You were born for such a time as this. I was born. This is the, this is the season I was born for. This is, 
Everything that I learned in the past was for now. This is my time. This is my season. This is my breakthrough. Get up on your feet and praise Him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just take about 30 seconds right now and praise Him. Just take about 30 seconds and bless Him. Thank Him that you are delivered, that today is your delivery day. Today hallelujah. is Labor Day, delivery day. We're breaking through, hallelujah. we're breaking out. We are expanding. We're stepping into a new realm, a new Thank purpose, you, a new Jesus. season. Now, now, today, today, today. Today, today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks. I give you praise. Because I read in your word, in Jeremiah 30, verse 6, that even men can give birth to that which you have deposited in us. Today on this Labor Day weekend, we declare and decree that we are pushing, we are delivering. We are going through the labor, but the time of expansion has come. Breakthrough has come. Delivery is here. We will bring forth and deliver in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. We receive what you have. We receive it in faith. We receive it according to your word. We receive it according to your promise. In the name of Jesus. And here's what I want us to do as we close together. I'm going to invite everybody in just a moment to come and join me in this altar area. And we're just going to celebrate the new birth. We're going to celebrate our deliverance and our delivery. Because you know that is part of the process. When, when the birthing is going on, Usually there are family members and friends in waiting. They're in the waiting room. They want to be updated as often as possible. If they're Christians, they're praying that everything goes well. But as soon as they get the word, the baby's here. Then everybody's celebrating. Everybody's rejoicing. And as soon as possible, they'll roll the mom and the baby out of the delivery room, maybe going to a new room, depending on the hospital and the process. But I remember when Brittany was born, we rolled her and mom down the aisle and down the hall, and right outside was the waiting room, and they opened the doors, and her dad came in, her mom, her sister, family members came in as they arrived. People would come, and they're, they're celebrating. Celebrations going. Everybody wants to see the baby. But I want to give you an opportunity today to do something symbolic. I'm going to give you an opportunity to cut the cord. Because today, some of you, you recognize the birthing season. You recognize the delivery. You have been in some travail. Some of you have been travailing in some tough labor and the pains have been great the process has been challenging it's been frustrating but you're going to give birth it's time but you've got to cut the cord you've got to cut the cord from the past season and I know sometimes that might seem like it can be scary but it's part of the process that God ordained from the foundation of the world. It's a natural part of the process. The cord is cut. So in this aisle and over in this aisle, if you want to cut the cord as a symbolic action, and the Bible is full of symbolic action. I need to just preach on symbolic action sometimes just to give you some examples of symbolic action but it's a symbolic action that we are doing in the natural realm which will manifest in your spiritual life